right. So Salk right? used to say, this isn't a rival about two people, this is a rival about a principle. Do you do a killed vaccine or a live virus vaccine, which in itself he worried could actually cause polio. But as time went on, after the vaccine uh, had been approved, uh, and uh, four years later, uh, para paralytic polio was reduced by 90% in the United States, but the scientists still believed that the Salk vaccine was just a stopgap until they had an oral live virus vaccine. They all still believe that. Sabin tested one, he tested it in, in Russia. It was safe, it was effective. In the middle of the Cold War. In the middle of the Cold War. Um, and uh, that's a whole other story itself. And uh, in the early 1960s, the Public Health Service recommended uh, switching and using the Sabin vaccine, citing cost, it was much cheaper, and convenience. You could just get it in a sugar cube. Uh, but there was a lot of, of the basic scientists uh, working beneath that. There was a lot of politics as well. Um, Sabin was very upset, I mean, Salk was very upset about that. Um, he tried to get that decision uh, reversed. Um, he was worried again that it would actually cause polio. Um, and all the major medical decision makers, the CDC, the FDA, the American Medical Association, everyone turned a deaf ear to him. And by 1968, no one made the Salk vaccine in the United States anymore. So Salk spent the rest of his life trying to get the Sabin vaccine delicensed because, in fact, people did get polio from that vaccine. It was a small number, the vaccine was entrenched, the scientific community was behind Sabin, and so Salk just became tenacious in trying to reverse that decision. Um, and that is where the rivalry really started to heat up. Mm -hmm. But again, Salk never said a bad word about Sabin. He was always very gentlemanly. 